being an affiliate for other people's programs or tools and getting commission for that is an incredible way to monetize something that you're already raving about, already using, and know that your audience would really get value from it. I'm Amy Porterfield, ex-corporate girl turned CEO of a multi seven-figure business. But it wasn't all that long ago that I lacked the confidence, the budget, and the time to focus on growing my small but mighty business. Fast forward past many failed attempts and lessons learned, and you'll see the business I have today, one that changes lives and gives me more freedom than I ever thought possible. One that used to only exist as a daydream. I created the Online Marketing Made Easy podcast to give you simple, actionable, step-by-step strategies to help you do the same. If you're an ambitious entrepreneur or one in the making who's looking to create a business that makes an impact and a life you love, you're in the right place, friend. Let's get started. Hey there, Amy Porterfield here, and I am so glad that you chose to come hang out with me for another episode of Online Marketing Made Easy. Today, I have a juicy topic for you, so let's not waste any time. Let's dive in. Now, you know that I am a big proponent of less is more, especially with the different offers and digital products that you have. So if you've ever wondered what you should do for those diehard loyal customers who have already opted into your email list or purchased all of your big and small ticket digital products and follow you on social media, et cetera, et cetera, you are in the right place. If you listen to my recent episode on funnels, it's number 620 and has proven to be one of my most popular episodes. So you get there by going to amyporterfield.com forward slash 620. But it's an episode on how I built my funnels. And if you listen to that one already, then you've learned that funnels truly are a relationship building tool where you're taking your potential customers through a simple enticing experience with your brand in hopes that they eventually convert into actual customers. In short, there's a top of funnel where you get in front of people and you entice them, a middle of the funnel where you nurture them, and then bottom of the funnel where action is taken. Circling back to my less is more motto, I am usually never selling more than three digital products at one time. And it's common for my students as they work to scale their businesses to only be selling one product at a time which leads to the big question that we need to answer in this episode. What happens after a customer has already purchased all of your offers? They've experienced and bought into every stage of your sales funnel, which is amazing, by the way. So give yourself a pat on the back if you have a few different offers and most of your customers have bought all of them. Like, that's a quality problem, my friend. Well, the question is, what do we do next? Where do we direct these loyal customers? Well, my friend, don't sweat it. I'm going to share three ways that you can encourage a loyal customer to keep hanging out at the bottom of the funnel where they continue to engage and purchase from you. These examples are actual tactics that we currently implement in my own business and those that I teach my students. So they've been tested and proven successful with our loyal customers. So get ready to take some notes because if you already have digital products that you're selling, you'll be leaving this episode with some homework, but like in the best way possible. These are things that you can get started on today so that you don't waste another minute leaving loyal customers with nowhere to go. I want to emphasize that the customers at the bottom of your sales funnel are not only customers, but they are raving fans of you and your brand. They have deeply resonated with your message and trusted you to solve the problem that they have. So it's likely that they are ready to purchase whatever is next that you'll be selling. This is an exclusive group of people and you'll want to segment them accordingly so they are being given unique opportunities to further engage with you and your business based on the behaviors they've already demonstrated. So let's review the first opportunity, which is to take advantage of affiliate marketing. And really, there are two ways to engage your loyal customers through affiliate marketing, by having your own affiliates or by becoming one yourself. 
and I'll share more about where your loyal customers come into this. So let's start with having your own affiliates. To do this, you must establish an affiliate partner program. This marketing strategy has been highly lucrative for my offerings, specifically Digital Course Academy, which is my signature program. So if you're not familiar with affiliate partner programs, think of it as having a team of passionate brand advocates, either individuals or businesses, who can help you increase your revenue while they earn a little something for themselves too, but more importantly, help you add value to more people. We call these advocates affiliates, and I truly believe in treating them as an extension of your team. So in this case, we have a handful of loyal customers who have gone through Digital Course Academy, and they have the opportunity to sign up as an affiliate with us once they've gone through the program. However, I don't offer this just to all of my students. We're very specific that these are students who have actually completed Digital Course Academy and have engaged with us and have been able to build digital products in their own business so that they can authentically give a testament to Digital Course Academy and talk about their experience. Once they become an affiliate, they help spread the word about Digital Course Academy through their own unique URL, and in return, earn a commission for each sale they make. It's a fantastic way to, of course, keep this customer in our funnel, but also extend our reach, supercharge our sales, and see a huge revenue bump. Many of my affiliates are my most loyal students who have gotten results with my program. And a huge value add here is that not only do my affiliates or my loyal customers who have become affiliates not only do they see a nice commission, that they also get to establish their value as an expert and a business owner with their own customers and audience. By giving their community a vetted resource, which they have personally seen success from, they are earning more and more trust and are getting one step closer to expanding their own loyal customer base. So to get the most out of affiliate marketing, start by creating a stellar affiliate program. There's quite a bit that can go into this before you're actually ready to onboard affiliates, but I promise you the heavy lifting will absolutely pay off. So I'm going to detail a fairly comprehensive list of what we prepare in our affiliate program to make the experience successful for not only me and my team, but the affiliates that are participating. But if you want an entire episode about how we do this, you can find it by heading over to episode 290. So it's amyporterfield.com forward slash 290. And that episode is called Five Powerful Ways to Set Your Affiliates Up for Success. Now, first, and you probably already know I'm going to say this, set your goals. You have to have some sort of goal to work toward because otherwise your execution won't have any intention behind it. So I'd recommend that you start by setting a revenue goal that you want to reach through your affiliates and a recruitment goal, which would be the number of affiliates you'd like to recruit to be a part of your program. Now, my newbie students who have launched their course once or twice and then they want to invite affiliates in, they typically set a conservative goal, 10 affiliates or five affiliates the first time out. And I think that's a smart way to go. So you can kind of get all the kinks out before you actually move forward in a bigger way. Because I just want to take a beat and say that if you create an affiliate program and your affiliate links aren't tracking and your affiliates might not be getting the credit for all the sales they're making, that is a horrible experience. I've been on both ends. I've been in my case where we set something up wrong and an affiliate wasn't tracking appropriately we were able to fix it, but that feels really bad for the affiliate. I've been on the other side where I have been an affiliate for one of my peers and their affiliate tracking was off and I was doing all this hard work and wasn't getting the commission for it and we fixed it, but it's very frustrating. So you just want to start out with a smaller group first so you can make sure everything's working properly. So next, I'd figure out the commission rates. We like to incentivize our affiliates, so we offer them a really nice commission 
on Digital Course Academy. I'm old school. And years ago, when I started being an affiliate for people, I got 50%. And so I started giving my affiliates 50%. Now I've noticed the trend is 40-60 on average, but I've always stuck to 50-50 because it just feels good to me. And I want my affiliates to be really excited to promote Digital Course Academy or List Builder Society. So I stick to a 50-50, but 40-60 is appropriate as well. If you are selling software, so let's say you have a piece of software and you're having affiliates promote that, typically it's like 30% to the affiliate, 70% to you. So software is very different because it involves a lot more maintenance and upkeep and engagement. But with a digital course that's already pre-recorded, there's not a lot I have to do once the course has been sold. So I feel good about 50-50. And you also have to remember, a lot of this revenue that you're going to bring in through affiliates, you would have never seen it if it weren't for the affiliate talking about your offer to their audience. Sure, some sales that an affiliate will make you might have gotten that sale without the affiliate if that person was on your list and also on the affiliates list. So without the affiliate, you might have gotten that sale. But a lot of the sales that come in, you would have never seen that money. And so being generous with the commission is very easy to me because I always look at it as, well, I wouldn't have seen any of those sales if I didn't have the affiliates. So I'm happy to give 50%. And my goal is not just to make money. It's to reach people who would never have heard about me in the first place, but when they do and they see I have a solution to help them build their business, they're all in. And I want to help as many people grow a freedom-filled business as possible. And so I love the opportunity to get in front of audiences I would never have access to before. So to me, affiliate marketing is such a win-win. Now, also, don't forget to reward your affiliates with timely commission payouts. This is a big one because if someone's promoting for you after the refund period, you wanna be ready to cut them their first check. Now there's tons of software you can use to help track the affiliate sales and track how much you owe an affiliate and all of that good stuff. So you can research affiliate platforms, but make sure you find one that you can really understand to make sure you're getting your affiliates paid in a timely manner. But again, amyporterfield.com forward slash 290, I get into a lot of details about affiliates. All right, so that wraps up my first way that you can tap into affiliate marketing when you have already sold your programs to your most loyal customers. But the second way is sort of the flip side of building out your own affiliate program, which is a lot of work. And the flip side of that is to become an affiliate. And quite honestly, I would never build out an affiliate program until you are an affiliate for somebody else's program. You learn a lot when you are an affiliate for someone else's program, and you'll get a lot of great ideas, especially if you're an affiliate for a seasoned marketer who has done it a lot of times, you're going to learn a lot from that. Okay, so in this case, I'm the affiliate and I'm marketing my peers' products that I have had success with or an online tool that we currently use and I'm marketing that as a resource to my audience. In turn, I get a commission for each purchase made through my special link. So where do our bottom of the funnel customers come into play here? Well, my customers look to me to provide them with resources and information that can uplevel their businesses and expand their knowledge and make their lives easier. And I've built a strong enough trust with these loyal customers that they're likely to continue purchasing resources, software, and other courses that I personally recommend and put my stamp of approval on. So I'm able to market these resources that I'm an affiliate for to my own loyal customers who, after purchasing my courses, might still be wanting more from me. So my customers can then decide if they want to purchase these resources through my own unique affiliate link. And if they purchase, I earn a commission from that sale and that customer gets another tried and true resource from me to help improve their business. So I want to say a couple of important points about the strategy because being an affiliate does require effort if you want to see big results. That's why I only participate in these a few times a year. 
and sometimes just like two times a year. So the vetting process is very important. And what I mean by that is I want to promote tools and resources that I use in my own business or that can further my students' businesses right away. So for information on how I do this, I want you to check out episode 568. It's called Affiliate Marketing 101, What I've Done to Earn $300,000 Per Quarter in Affiliate Revenue. So that's amyporterfield.com forward slash 568. When I think about affiliating, I think about it as level one and level two. So level one for me would be that I'm an affiliate of Stu McLaren's program, the membership experience. And so he's got this program. I think it's a little over $2,000 now, and I'm going to promote it to my entire email list. And I'm going to do videos for it. I'm going to get on social. I'm going to send out multiple emails. I'm going to invite people to his three-part video series and to his webinar. So I'm really going to make an effort. And my secret to being one of the most successful affiliate marketers in most of the arenas I'm in is that I treat it as though it's my own launch. So I go all in. And that's why I can't do many of these each year because it doesn't leave a lot of room for my own programs and products that I'm promoting. But that would be like a level one where I go all in, we book it on our calendar early, we know we're going to participate, we make effort to create special bonuses and write all the emails and all of that. Now, a level two affiliate experience for me would be software and tools. And so Kajabi, Searchy, ConvertKit, those are the three top tools that I recommend. Now, I might do a mini email promo for them. I might actually do a special training inside one of my communities for those tools. I have them linked up on the resources page on my website. And this is where I make the biggest impact. Inside my courses, I talk about them, I promote them, I encourage people to check them out. So when you get into Digital Course Academy, you'll learn about Kajabi and Searchy. They essentially are competitors, but I love them both. And I actually use them both for different things. And so I will give two options to my Digital Course Academy students. I'm an affiliate for both of those, and I make it very clear. But you might say, well, what about Teachable or Thinkific or some of these other ones? Well, they're fantastic as well. I don't use them. I don't have experience with them. And I'm not going to promote something I don't use or have experience with. And also promoting too many similar tools is very confusing to your students. They literally want you to tell them which one should I use. And so just a few tools that you recommend and finding different ways to talk about them and put links in different areas that make sense will allow you to make money with those tools all year long. So when I say that we make a goal of making $300,000 a quarter, with our affiliate revenue, that's tools, as well as ads on my podcast, because I feel as though that's like affiliate marketing, and promoting other people's programs. So that's kind of what it's made up of. So basically, being an affiliate for other people's programs or tools and getting commission for that is an incredible way to monetize something that you're already raving about, already using, and know that your audience would really get value from it. So I do a strong vetting process. It's very rare that I'm going to promote something beyond my own programs or products or services. And when I do, you can bet I'm using them or have used them when my business might've been smaller and I highly recommend them. So that way my audience knows if Amy's promoting it, I can trust it because I know she's done her homework. All right, are you still with me? I have one more very important way to keep loyal customers coming back for more. And that's to offer an exclusive membership meant for the customers who have already purchased all of your digital products. So for example, my membership is called the Momentum Membership, and it's limited to only my Digital Course Academy alumni. So if you have been through DCA, then you will get an exclusive invite into the membership. And it's subscription-based, so it's $97 a month. 
Now, you might be wondering, how do I know if my customers would buy into a membership program? Well, I've said it once and I'll say it again. Listen to them and ask them. If you find they're asking for more, or if you find your students are asking the same questions after they've completed your course, then you, my friend, likely have a good argument to start a membership. Also, my good friend, Stu McLaren, who I'll bring up in just a minute again, because he taught me everything I need to know about memberships. He once told me that if you get to the end of your program, so like Digital Course Academy is nine weeks. And years ago, when I offered this, I didn't have a membership. And I'd get to the end of the program and people would say, wait a second, are you going away? What's next? Like after the nine weeks, like I'm not ready yet. Most people haven't launched their course in nine weeks. They've just gone through my program and a lot of them have created the course. Now they're getting ready to launch and they're using my program to learn how to do so. And so Stu told me, if people are saying, whoa, don't go away, I'm feeling a little nervous. Like when you leave us, what if we have questions? What do we do? that's when you know a membership would be great. So in my case, the reason I created Momentum is because if you go through Digital Course Academy for nine weeks with me and every week I've got a live Q&A and you've got this beautiful community of other people helping you, answering questions, you're in your accountability pod, you likely will have gone through the program and maybe even finished your course or getting close to it, but you likely will not have launched yet. And so if you want to continue the momentum that you already have, or if you've kind of fallen off the wagon and you know you need to get back on and you want that accountability, you want to be able to ask me questions and you want training beyond just how to create and launch a course, but all the different things you can do to make even more money in your business. Well, then I invite you into momentum where we will continue the journey together so that you don't lose the momentum, right? It's a perfect name for a membership that you've started with DCA. So that is basically why I created the program. Something to think about, you could obviously have a membership that doesn't have the stipulation that they have to go through a certain program. But remember what we're talking about. People have bought all my courses. What now? Well, they can join my membership, but now it's month to month. So I have recurring revenue coming in. They have recurring support from me. And the way I saw it was without this membership, my best customers are going to look elsewhere for additional support. And I want to be their mentor. I want to continue on this journey with them. So this was the best way to do so. Now, I'm not going to sugarcoat this. If you're committed to offering a top-notch membership program, it requires some work. You have to continue to provide value within that membership in order to retain that monthly membership fee and keep people happy. And you have to be consistent with this when you have a membership. It's not something that's one and done. The reason I tend to like courses better than memberships is I like the idea of creating the course, pre-recording it, delivering it, showing up live for nine weeks, and then kind of stepping back and just taking a break for a while. Where a membership, I do show up for it every single month. I do a live training every month, and I do a live Q&A every month for my membership members. It's not hard and I enjoy it, but it's every single month where a course is nine weeks and I'm done. And so I do love the idea of being done for a while, but then my membership is not too taxing that I'm regretting it or anything like that. It's just different. And you want to be aware of that. Now, my friend, Stu McLaren, he is a huge resource for memberships, all things memberships. Like I said, he's taught me everything I know. And he'd be one to say, Amy, you don't have to be on a hamster wheel when you have like a content hamster wheel. When you have a membership, there's ways to batch your content. And I do agree with him on that. So there's ways to make a membership easier so it doesn't feel like you're always working on it. So if you have any interest, stay with me. In March and April, I'll talk more about the membership experience. I'm an affiliate. I always do extra special bonuses and work with Stu on promoting the program because I believe in it that much. If you love Digital Course Academy, you would love the membership experience. Now to circle back just for a moment, I thought it might be helpful if I shared with you the breakdown of what I offer in Momentum, because I already told you I do a live training once a month and I do a live Q&A, but there's four weeks in a month and I like to give something each week. 
So I want to kind of share with you. Now, keep in mind that this is very specific to the type of continued support my students need. However, there are a million and one ways to offer a membership that's suited perfectly to your business and to continue to entice your students or customers who have already bought with you to stay in your community. So use this as inspiration, but no, this is very specific to my business and to what happens after Digital Course Academy. So again, there's four deliverables because we do one a week and we do this every single month. So in the first week, we host a Momentum Masterclass. Again, that's usually with me, but I also invite other industry experts to come in and we teach on things like growing your email list or some cool strategy that I did during my launch that I don't teach in DCA or how to grow your podcast or how to get more people to your website, things that are going to help you make more money with your digital course. So they're all related to creating and launching digital courses, but also how to just scale your business and grow your business. So we do one masterclass every single month, the first week of every single month. And that masterclass is usually around 45 minutes. And then the second week, we host a how I did this training, where Momentum members lead a one hour long training session, sharing a process, a strategy, and a really detailed how to behind the scenes of what is working in their business. So maybe they did a three day challenge. And then at the end of the challenge, they did a webinar like I teach in DCA. So they get into the group and they're like, here's exactly how I did my three day challenge and do a webinar. And this is stuff that I don't teach, so it's really valuable. But no one teaches anything that they haven't gotten results with. So that's great. And it's a great way to get my students involved and just share knowledge. And then in week three, we create a plug and play template that I use in my business. And we do this for course creation, course launching, building your email list, all that kind of stuff. So I use a lot of templates in my business from sales emails to project plans to graphic design templates to re-engagement campaigns for your email list, video scripts, SOPs, all that kind of stuff. And so depending on what we think is needed for our students, we will give them one of our templates that they can make their own. And then in the last week of the month, I do my live Q&A. So no matter if you're brand new to all of this or you've been around for a while, the Q&As are really, really valuable. But notice I'm only doing week one and week four. Week two is the student teaching. Week three is the template that my team creates. So it's not overly taxing to me to deliver inside the membership, but I still really get to engage with my students. So overall, when it comes to our membership content, We're just really intentional about making sure we build on what our members have learned in DCA and what they need to continue to grow. And then the last piece of momentum is the community. So the entire point of a membership is to take the relationship that you've already created with a customer and nurture it to become a long lasting relationship. And the best way to do that is through human connection, conversation and socializing. And we do that in a private Facebook group. So we have a group for sure that we are checking into on a daily basis. So I have a community team. There are always sparking conversation. They're in there supporting people. So that part is definitely a lot of work because we have a lot of members, but absolutely worth it. By the way, I do have two podcasts. You don't have to wait till March and April when we promote the membership experience again. I have two podcasts that you can look into. So episode 260 is titled All About Membership Sites, Your Top 10 Burning Questions. So if you're just like really curious about a membership, I think listen to that one. So amyporterfield.com forward slash 260. And then I have another one. It's episode 453 titled Why Memberships Are the Future of Online Business. That one's a great one too. So I'll link to both of them in the show notes, but I would start with episode 260. Out of all the continued support I offer to these students who are in the bottom of my funnel, I think my membership is my absolute favorite. It's a joy to see my students flourish. Just today, I got to hear a story of one of my students who launched for the very first time and her huge success of making over $100,000 with her very first digital course launch. Like I wouldn't hear those stories if they weren't in momentum. A pleasant surprise I wasn't expecting is I get to hear a lot of success stories because people are in momentum and they're launching. 
So it's really cool. And one thing we do in that membership is that we encourage students to give a debrief of their launch and they share what worked, what didn't work, how much money they made, what they do different is pretty powerful. They just do that out of the goodness of their heart. So it's a beautiful community and a great way for you to continue mentoring your students. Okay, my friend, that concludes our time together today. And I really hope that you've taken some great notes and gained inspiration to get started on one of these strategies to retain those diehard customers that you've worked so hard to earn. Now, before we part ways, I do want to emphasize the importance of these strategies to the growth of your business. Let's just say, for example, you set a goal in year two of your business to earn $200,000 in revenue from your digital course. Fast forward to year two, and you've hit this revenue goal that you set. Congratulations. You've acquired all these customers. Now, how are you going to top that revenue goal in year three? Because once these customers complete your course, and it's the only offer you have, because you know, I'm all about fewer offers that you promote over and over and over again. So what if they've already bought your course? Or if you have two courses, they've already bought those. You've probably heard this before, but it's worth repeating. According to HubSpot, it costs five to 25 times more to acquire a new customer than to retain an existing one. And according to Forbes, statistics show an increase in customer retention by 5% can lead to a company's profits growing by 25% to around 95% over a period of time. And last stat for you, the success rate of selling to a customer that you already have is 60 to 70%, while the success rate of selling to a new customer is like 5 to 20%. The point in sharing all this information with you is that it is extremely difficult to grow your business without both retaining your current customers and acquiring new ones. A lot of times we focus so much on the acquisition of new customers that we become a bit complacent and forget to nurture the relationships that we already have. I don't want this to happen to you. So make sure you check out some of my past podcast episodes that I mentioned. I'm going to list all of them in the show notes. So if you go to amyporterfield.com forward slash 637, I'll list all those episodes that could absolutely help you do affiliate marketing. And if you're ever thinking about it, grow a membership. And remember, Done is better than perfect. You can always go back and make changes to these things, but if you never start, you'll never reap the rewards that I know you deserve. All right, my friend, thanks for joining me for another episode of Online Marketing Made Easy. I'll see you next week, same time, same place. Bye for now.